Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our virtual event, TTC Connects, Engineering, Construction, and Technical Graduates Information Session. Thank you for taking the time to participate today. We hope you enjoy the session and that you find it insightful. My name is Shabnam Durrani, and I will be your moderator during this session. We'd like to open today's session with a land acknowledgement. The land acknowledgement is considered a first step to acknowledge and honor the first persons that are sorry, excuse me, the first people that have lived here for thousands of years and the enduring presence of Indigenous persons. Giving thanks, respect, and honoring the land and ancestors was and continues to be a common practice within these communities. The process of showing appreciation and giving thanks has a long history on these lands. Land acknowledgements are a small, yet significant way to show respect and acknowledge the presence of Indigenous peoples, past and present. So let's take a moment to acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat people, and is now home to many First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. So before I review today's agenda, there are a few housekeeping items to be addressed. We are using a live media webcasting service platform for this session. We have many people registered for today, so all attendees must be muted. That means we will invite your participation through the chat box. You can access this by clicking or tapping on the chat button on your screen. You can use this feature to submit a question for the TTC panel. The questions received are kept private. Therefore, no other attendees will be able to see the questions that you submit. We know that technological problems can and do happen, so we appreciate your patience with us. If you are having any issues, Feel, please feel free to also use the chat box to ask for help. Staff will monitor this throughout the meeting and do their best to help you out. The presentation and discussion today are closed captioned. You will see subtitles with a black background and white words typed at the bottom of your screen. This webinar is also being recorded and will be available for viewing online within a couple of days following the event. If you need to leave this information session early, that is fine. We are recording it and we will send all attendees the link to access it after, uh, sorry, from the TTC website. Also, there are a few ways that you can stay in touch with the TTC. First, you can visit ttc.ca slash jobs to create a profile and search for available jobs. You can even set up an email alert to be notified of new listings. You can also follow the TTC on Instagram at Take the TTC. Try out the Think TTC filter and picture yourself with your favorite mode, TTC streetcar, bus, subway, or wheel trans. Also, share a video or a photo of yourself using the filter and add hashtag TTC connects today and your photo or video may be shared on TTC's Instagram page. Follow the TTC page on LinkedIn at Toronto Transit Commission, where you will find job postings as well as other informative posts featuring employees and current initiatives at our organization. This information will be provided again at the end of the session. For the session today, the TTC has prepared an exciting lineup of guest speakers to walk you through the many different aspects of engineering, construction, and technical positions at our organization, as well as sharing their career journeys. Today's presentation will begin with opening remarks from the TTC's Chief Executive Officer, Rick Leary. Fort Monaco, Chief of Infrastructure and Engineering will introduce you to the positions and outline the requirements for each one. Andrea Gonzalez, a civil engineering technologist will speak to the technical roles of the TTC and share her career journey. We will then have Adam Arinda, a maintenance systems coordinator from our vehicles group, who will provide insight on career progression and his experience in his current role. 
Marika Fraser, Manager of the Diversity and Outreach Program, will speak about diversity at the TTC, followed by an open forum Q&A session and closing remarks. As I mentioned earlier, for the Q&A session, I will invite you to submit your questions using the chat feature. While you are welcome to submit them at any time, you may want to hold off until the open forum as your question may be answered by one of our guest speakers during the presentation. Staff will respond, um, staff will respond live to questions if time allows. So with that, I would like to now introduce our CEO, Rick Leary, to get the afternoon started. Rick? Well, thank you very much, Chef. That was a, a great opening. Uh, for the, this organization. I really appreciate what you're doing. I want to say good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rick Leary, and I'm the CEO of the TTC. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here with you today as one of the speakers on this virtual session. Now, I'm going to say that while this event is open to everyone, we are particularly interested in reaching out to you, new graduates, to provide you with an opportunity to hear from TTC employees about their experiences here at the TTC. You know, this is actually our first virtual uh, session for new graduates. Last year, we actually did two uh, information sessions focused on encouraging women to join the TTC and more specifically to become frontline operators in bus, streetcar, and subway or work within our stations. You know, I want to thank uh, TTC staff, uh, talent management, marketing, and customer experience, corporate communications, and IT services for making this event possible. And I'd like to also like to thank all the partners outside, our stakeholders, who helped us promote this event because I can tell you, without the efforts uh, of others, uh, we would not be successful. It really takes a community. I'd also like to say a, a special thank you um, for everyone for your interest in this organization and being here today. I think that's wonderful. And thank you for making time to be with us. We're excited to have you here. I also like to express our greetings from the TTC chair, Jay Robinson, as well as the entire board, as well as my deputy, uh, Kirsten Watson here at the TTC. You know, I'm going to let you know, as, as the CEO, it gives me great pleasure to talk about the TTC and what our service means to the city of Toronto and actually what it could mean to you as well. You know, working in public transit, I can tell you, was a great way to start a career. I began operating trains in Boston while I was in university myself. And I've been in this business a long time, 37 years. And it's also important to remember that transit is more than just about bus drivers and train operators. Right? We have opportunities in engineering and law and construction, IT and human resources. The list is just it's plentiful. It's, it's, you'd be amazed. You know, it, it really is a unique organization and what, what makes, this, makes this organization up. But working at the TTC is more than just a job, I'll tell you. It, uh, it's a call to service for the city and the greater Toronto area at large. So what I'm going to do is give you a little bit of facts about the TTC today. So in September of this year, the Toronto Transit Commission will mark its 100th anniversary in this city. It's an amazing feat. We're the third largest transit system in all of North America. Only Mexico City and New York City have a larger transit systems than this, the TTC. You know, pre-pandemic, we actually carried a million customers approximately every two years. And just last year alone, we operated more than 254 million kilometers of service. Again, incredible numbers. And to just so you're aware, the 85% of all passenger uh, public transit trips in the GTHA are taken right here in the city of Toronto at the TTC. You know, you, you look at the numbers in pre-pandemic, obviously, the 1.7 million customers' journeys are taken on a typical weekday on the TTC. Even now with the reduced ridership, we still continue to carry hundreds of thousands of people daily. You know, and we're hard at work building a world-class transit system here for Toronto, and not just for the time that we're here, the five-year period that we're here, but for really a long 25-year outlook, always looking to the future. And we wanna make the transit system that makes the city proud and a system that does more than that. You know, we wanna become more accessible. We wanna be more efficient, more flexible, more innovative. It's important for us. We want to be more integrated with the communities we serve, reliable, and just as importantly, or most importantly, I'd say, more inclusive. You know, the reasons for working at the TCC are varied within our workforce. You know, many people here in the organization consider this a second home. Some find the TTC a good working environment, 
They have a high regard with working for others or with others in, in teamwork. Team building is important to us. You know, some of us tout the benefits and the pension plans. And it's something you want to think about well into the future, but think about it today. Some enjoy working outdoors and interacting with the public. And others join the TTC just because for the simple fact they want to work for a world-class organization and, the, and recognize the impact that we have on the city. You know, my colleagues addressing you here today or this afternoon will offer varied perspectives and personal experiences for you to consider. You know, one thing I, I'd like to share is, you know, how I approach my job. You know, when I started at the TTC, it was almost seven years ago, we set out to undertake one of the most substantial transformations that I've ever seen in a large transit agency. And again, I'll, I've been in this business for 37 years. Everything from modernizing our fleets to accelerating the state of good repair and to transforming our culture and our people. This means that we're working to build a workforce that is better reflects the diversity of the city that we serve and in turn enhances our relationship with our customers. We believe that the new graduates are going to be all part of this. These are great opportunities here at the TTC. I'd let you know that we want you graduates. We're, we want your enthusiasm. We want your ideas, your excitement, your innovation. And we really do want you to uh, take a good look at this organization and think about not just joining it, but making a career here. It's a fabulous organization. I'm incredibly proud of this organization. I let you know I'm proud of, proud of the people and the work they do tirelessly for the citizens of Toronto in the greater area and really looking forward to having some of you join this organization and making a career here. It's fabulous. So I want to say thank you for joining us today. We look forward to dialogue and having discussions with you. Uh, enjoy the event and stay safe. Thank you very much for being here. Shabnam, back to you. Thank you, Rick. I would now like to introduce our Chief of Infrastructure and Engineering. Fort Monaco to speak about his journey at the TTC and some of the roles. Fort, over to you. Thank you, Shabnam. Um, hello, everybody. My name is uh, Fortunato, or I've known as Fort Monaco, and I'm currently the Chief of Infrastructure and Engineering at the TTC. And I would just like to start by saying what a pleasure it truly is to have been asked to participate in TTC's first ever virtual technical fair today. I'm actually really excited to be a part of this endeavor. So I can tell you that after almost 23 years at the TTC, I really start to take a look forward. And I think to myself, I have a lot less time left here uh, than I put in. So to me, I started thinking about tomorrow and how the TTC will look like in 10 years or 20 years from now. You know, I'll tell you what, one of my main criteria of success when executing any past or present jobs throughout my career has always truthfully been to answer the following question, that I leave the place better than how I found it. For me to answer that question correctly with a definitive yes, it is absolutely imperative that I consider who our management replacements will be, not only next year, but the year after that, and five years from now, and 10 and 20 years from now. So events like this are really important for me because I truly believe that many of our future leaders lie out there with the strong talent pool of new or recent university and college graduates, either eager to start a, a new career, a career that will offer them what the TTC has offered me. You know, back a long time ago, maybe around the time, maybe some of you were born and maybe not even born, April, 1998, I was in your shoes. I was on the verge of graduating from McMaster University with a bachelor in engineering and management degree wondering what options I had available to me. I was also on the verge of proposing to my future wife, so we were both looking at starting our new lives together very soon, and obviously choosing a place of employment where I could be welcomed, where I could learn, where I could develop, and eventually get into a position where I could mentor others was really very important to me, which really brings me to now. A little background. Yes, I did eventually graduate in 19, 1998, as mentioned, and was lucky enough to commence my employment with the TTC in May of that year. But the interesting thing is, believe it or not, I had done nine consecutive summers as a TTC student while I was a senior in high school and then all throughout my university years. My very first day at the TTC, believe it or not, was July the 4th, 1989, which is probably a long time before any of you guys were born. So as a student, I was offered the opportunities from cleaning office buildings to cleaning and mopping subway trains, 
um, providing um, a, a storekeeper relief at main subway vehicle maintenance depot, serializing and learning many of the parts of the different subway vehicles we had at the time. I worked as an SRT subway yard operator. And finally, actually, as I was graduating, I, was, I worked in the subway vehicle engineering office. The summer years were so rewarding. And I learned so much that the TTC had hooked me. That said, a full-time position wasn't guaranteed upon graduation. And therefore, I had to consider other options. And luckily, I had two other offers at that April 1998 juncture, but I still wanted to hear from the TTC. Luckily, TTC did come through with a very late offer, but it was at far less compensation offer than the other two companies. So I had a decision to make. So given my student background, I eventually chose uh, the TTC because I knew the awesome opportunities that lay ahead. TTC was in my blood and joining at less compensation was worth it as far as I was concerned. But once I accepted TTC's offer, I started to think, what would have happened had I not had the summer years as my reference? Chances are I would not have taken the TTC or even applied a TTC. And what would my life look like now? I asked myself, why didn't TTC make it a point to tell everyone how awesome a place it is, how great they are to work for, the opportunities they offer? I think I'm having camera issues. I'm getting people telling me I have camera issues. Can everyone see me or, or no? No. Weird. I could see myself. <laughs> okay, so I'll just continue. Unfortunately, I guess we're having some of those technical glitches that uh, we mentioned at the beginning. So I'll, I'll continue. Um, um, so the opportunities they offer, how they recognize good hard work and how you can really make a very successful and rewarding career in public transportation. You make the difference in people's lives every single day by the work that you do, as Rick had mentioned. Well, this brings me today. I want to tell you all the amazing opportunities that there are for talented people like you, not just in, the, in our division, which is the infrastructure and engineering division, but throughout the rest of the organization. In the infrastructure and engineering division alone, we are looking for technical people to work in our two rail divisions. That's both on the subway and the streetcar side. Uh, traction power electrification, power distribution areas, subway and surface facilities areas, and that's just the start. Opportunities to move and learn other areas of the organizations will persist as TTC is growing. Um, public transportation will remain very relevant and topical for the next several decades. The opportunities exist more today than ever before, and I encourage you all to really consider the TTC as a career. I can tell you that since I joined the TTC as a technical assistant uh, in 1998, I have held no less than nine positions in 23 years. I've worked in five different departments. I've obtained my professional engineering designation in 2001. I obtained my master's in business administration in 2002, which ironically was completed on a part-time basis while I worked full-time at the TTC. And I also acquired my project management or PMP designation in July of 2009. My career focus has been learning the electrical trade on a variety of different fronts, um, medium to senior management roles, project management, and in December of 2018, I was fortunate enough to join the DTC executive team. So in closing, I love my job. I work with great people. I continue to learn so much every day from so many talented people. And I am so proud of what the DTC does every day for our customers, for our city. And I'll tell you, I'm just as proud of the work that we do that the general public may not even know about. Uh, we have so much to be proud of, and I can assure you that we are all continually looking at ways of improving our practices and investing in our people. So in closing, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak at this forum, and I'll turn it back over to Shabnam. My apologies for the technical glitches that we've had. Thank you for it. That was an amazing speech, despite the technical difficulties. I would now like to introduce Andrea Gonzalez. She is an engineering technologist, civil engineering in our construction and expansion group. She is going to be speaking about technical roles at the TTC, as well as her career journey. Andrea? Thank you, Chapman. 
Hi, everyone. My name is Andrea Gonzalez. I am a civil engineering technologist for the engineering, construction, and expansion team. I have been with the commission for three years this May. This is a position I was just recently promoted to in September of last year. Previously, I was a civil drafter for the same civil team. My main role as a drafter was to prepare, review, um, preliminary and final CAD drawings for various stages of different civil projects. I was working along senior engineers and design engineers to complete the design drawing packages. Now in my role as a civil engineer and technologist, my responsibilities have expanded to not only prepare and review the drawing packages, but to assist with design concepts as well. I really enjoy having a bit more of a say when it comes to opinions and decisions on the final design. I also conduct site visits to determine existing conditions and assess the site, the site and surroundings areas. I conduct different kinds of studies as necessary and also assist with field surveys, inspections and technical investigations such as CCTV inspections of our sewer systems and locates of telecommunications, gas, and electrical conduits. I have also enjoyed some of the TTC events outside of my own team, such as co-coordinating the ECNE United Way campaign for the years of 2018 and 2019, where through our efforts, we were able to raise more than $50,000 each year to be donated to this great organization. The civil department at ECNE is responsible for all on-grade related matters, including on-grade pavement rehabilitation, new sewer system design, sewer rehabilitation and investigations, underground utilities, investigations, and more. I strongly believe that the civil department plays a major role for the TTC as it ensures and maintains the quality of all on-grade matters at all stations within TTC property. We ensure all our stations are designed safely and efficiently following all applicable TTC and City of Toronto standards. Our team is also responsible for the designing of hoarding, staging, and construction management plans, ensuring that all on-grade construction is conducted in the safest manner, protecting all employees, customers, and the general public. Another civil aspect that also falls under our team's responsibility is the underground utilities and sewers. We conduct studies to inspect and determine the efficiency and quality state of our sewers, and we design new sewer systems for new developments and upgrade sewer lines when it deems necessary. We also ensure all our utilities are placed structurally safe and sound. Keeping all underground utilities and sewers working is absolutely vital, not just to the commission, but to the society in general. Imagine a fire main line feeding water to a fire hydrant and a sprinkler system and finding out it's not working at the worst possible moment, possibly having devastating consequences. We in the civil department do not design the sprinkler, the sprinkler system but we do design the main line that fits water to it. So ensuring it is working properly is of paramount importance. I can't emphasize enough how grateful I am for having the opportunity of working for a company like TTC. The lessons have been amazing. The experience I have gained over the past three years have been amazing too. And the people I work with are all equally amazing. There is no way but up for me here, and I definitely look forward to all the future opportunities it brings my way. Thank you, Andrea. That was so amazing to hear about your uh, career. So I'd now like to turn it over to Adam Arenda, who's a maintenance system, who works in maintenance systems and rail cars and shops, in the vehicles group. He is going to speak about his experience as a recent graduate and his career progression at the TTC. Hi everyone, my name is Adam Ruda and I'm the maintenance systems coordinator for our rail cars and shops department. My team and I design and develop all of the internal software systems that are used to keep our subway trains running, as well as supporting existing systems and coordinate with all of our locations to make sure everyone has the required hardware and software. My, my journey began as a TTC co-op student in 2017 
and I immediately saw the potential this company had. During my first term, I was introduced to all the internal systems used in my department, and I was tasked with updating many of these systems to add additional features and to document these changes to assist with training our users. My manager has always been supportive from the beginning. We regularly communicate regarding my goals, and he assisted in creating a plan to guide me to accomplish these goals, as well as develop additional skills. I returned for a second term in 2018, where I was tasked with creating a new web-based system to help track delays in an organized and accessible way. In the past, these delays were sent through emails and were difficult to reference. Managers were requesting a new system that they could use to access these delays during meetings on mobile or desktop. Oh, sorry, on mobile or on desktop. Throughout the term, I was able to work with these managers to gather requirements and create a system that would be efficient, accessible, and easy to use for everyone. Creating that system is one of the highlights of my co-op terms and is still being used to this day. I've been working at the TDC for two years full-time now after graduating and the possibilities within this company are still endless. The TDC is currently working on modernization, so there's a lot of potential across all the departments as many systems are being updated. One of the reasons why I decided to return to the TTC as a full-time employee was because of the opportunities available here. I've spoken to a lot of coworkers who also started as co-op or summer students and worked their way into management positions over time, both within our department or switching between other departments, such as streetcar, bus, finance, service delivery, or service delivery. <laughs> uh, even after two years, I'm still learning new things and I'm excited for our upcoming projects. Now is the perfect time to be joining the TTC team. I definitely recommend applying to work at the TTC as you'll gain real life experience with a company that cares about their employees and keeps them educated, challenged, and competitively compensated. Thank you all for your time. Thank you so much, Adam. Again, that was great to hear about your uh, career so far at the TTC. So we now have a short four minute video to share with you. And in this video, you will hear from employees from various roles within this department as they share their experiences and the benefits of being at the TTC. The following program was recorded and produced prior to COVID-19. As a vehicle maintenance employee, you have the ability to gain transferable skills, to work on various modes and various challenges that are not only useful to you at the Commission, but also transferable throughout the transportation industry. Now that I'm working for the TTC, I love it. It's great knowing that I'm a part of a group of professionals providing a vital service for the City of Toronto. I'm very proud of the work I do. Every day is a different challenge. You can pursue a variety of professions here just by applying yourself. TTC is one of Canada's top 50 employers for many good reasons. This company has great medical benefits that you can't find anywhere else. Not just for you, but your family. When I'm at TTC, I'm covered. Working for the TTC is very stable. It's an industry that will continue to grow. One of the things I love about the company is that you can move up. Our trade license is transferable across the country. I started as a mechanic and I've been able to quickly move up into management and being able to manage maintenance personnel. That gave me the technical experience to be able to get into the rail industry. There are plenty of opportunities for movement within the company to suit your lifestyle. I continue to learn a lot of things. Uh, also because I'm working now with a team of experts, we have great opportunities for young people to put their high-tech skills to work. Uh, I was given the time and given the tools that I need to develop myself, and this information is going to stay with me for the rest of my life. The continuous development of my uh, knowledge at the TTC was a great asset for my career. You're even more marketable because of the knowledge and experience you get working with an agency like this. Any avenue that you could possibly think of uh, to go down, you could find it here at TTC. It's going to be with TTC because 
any opportunity I want can be found here. The opportunities are endless and only limited by your ambition. Come work with us and I guarantee you won't regret it. What a great video. So we now have Marika Fraser, our manager of the Diversity and Outreach Program to speak about diversity at the TTC. Marika? I think we may be having some more technical difficulties uh, I think Marika will be joining very shortly. There she is. Marika, over to you. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Technology challenges, not only COVID-19, but everything else. Everyone's having to pivot. Good afternoon. Um, I'm pretty sure Shabnam uh, introduced me, but I was having some challenges on my end. My name is Marika and I'm the manager of Outreach and Diversity. You've heard about the career paths from my colleagues and I thought I'd share mine as well as it is a little bit different. Um, I started at the TTC more than 27 years ago as a summer student. Um, I started in our wheel trans department where my job was to book door-to-door -door trips for customers. And after completing my university degree, I was hired on as a temporary employee to cover a maternity leave and eventually successfully applied to a permanent job as a schedule writer, again in the wheel trans department. From there, I moved to jobs in our vehicle engineering and safety departments before eventually landing in our human resources and talent management department. Clearly the TTC has offered me numerous opportunities just like it has our, my other colleagues and the other folks we heard today. But one of the real reasons I'm here is diversity is a top priority and I wanted to speak a little bit more to that. Diversity and inclusion, as well as equity, are truly priorities here at the TTC. As you can guess by my job title, they are top priorities for me as well. To be sure that everyone understands what I mean when I speak about diversity and inclusion, I'll provide some simple definitions. Diversity, those are traits and characteristics that make people unique. Differences that are recognizable. In terms of inclusion, those are behaviors and social norms that ensure that people feel welcomed, respected, appreciated, and valued. We provide service to diverse customers, so obviously it's important that we represent our customers, the customers and the people that we serve every day. It has been proven that a company that has people with a variety of backgrounds and skills will generate new ideas, and help companies to grow while improving relationships with customers. Despite these challenging times amid COVID and technical issues, of course, um, there is a lot of expansion happening at the TTC. And in addition, many of our employees are eligible to retire. So this has led to numerous employment opportunities that are available to all of you, 
paying attention to this event and participating. As we hire new employees, we're paying attention to diversity and inclusion because it is good for business and it's very good for our community. The values, the TTC itself specifically values uniqueness of individuals. And we want each employee to feel comfortable being their authentic self while at work and obviously as they move around in this world. The organization is making an effort to move the TTC to the forefront as we refresh our diversity, diversity and inclusion roadmap and develop strategies to help us to reach our goal. The TTC is restructured for success. As you can see, our CEO is very passionate about this journey and it shows with his unwavering support. We, are in, we have recently hired a Chief Diversity and Culture Officer, I believe she starts today, and she will help us to transform the organization and to drive culture transformation. This event and the events we held last year for the transit operator position are examples of how we are refocusing our outreach and hiring strategies and taking a targeted approach. Pre-COVID, um, the TTC would participate in numerous job fairs and information sessions that were hosted by our community partners and various schools. Many job seekers and recent graduates expressed a desire to work at the TTC, but wanted more information about the jobs that were available or the projects that we were working on. As you heard throughout the session, the employees featured have had numerous jobs in the company and are working on very exciting projects and expansion opportunities. And those things will all positively affect the community. To further ensure that we're building a workforce that reflects the city's diversity, we collect a lot of data. Um, and as many tech folks in the audience and, and, and engineering folks in the audience, you know that data is king or queen. Um, prior to this event, you were given an opportunity to respond to a survey that will help us to understand the effectiveness of our outreach and marketing of this event to organizations and schools that provide and support diverse skilled talent. If you apply to any job at the TTC, a similar survey will be offered to you, again, to measure the effectiveness of how we advertise our jobs. Know that recruiters and hiring managers will not be able to identify you or see your responses. When hired at the TTC, we will again ask new employees to complete a voluntary questionnaire to capture similar information. All of this information will allow the TTC to better understand its workforce and assist when developing policies and programs designed to ensure equitable treatment of all of our employees. This is important and it's, it's very important that everybody that's in the organization count themselves in. And as participants in this event, we hope that you got a chance to count yourself in. If you did choose not to complete the survey um, that was presented to you when you registered, it will be available online until April 9th. Just go back into the registration page, sign in and you can do so. And again, it would assist the organization to move forward in attracting skilled, diverse talent. Taking these surveys will always be voluntary at every stage. And again, the information that you provide, I can't stress this enough, it is kept in strictest confidence. Your participation is appreciated because the information collected, again, will help the company to move forward with structures to remove barriers and support employees, as well as to help shape the TTC into an organization that we can all be proud of. This next slide is showing that there are other opportunities for everybody participating in this event, as well as the broader Toronto and GTA area. The TTC currently has a number of jobs posted. Feel free to visit www.ttc.ca to see the current opportunities. Some of them are listed on the slide that you're seeing. Keep in mind, I believe the top three, they, if, if they don't close tomorrow, then they close fairly shortly. Actually, it's the bottom three, the ones in the vehicles group. They do close tomorrow, April 2nd. So if you're interested in those positions, please take a look. 
it would be a good idea to visit the website and register anyway, even if you're not interested in the positions you see. Um, and as Shabnam said earlier, you can always set it up so that you can get notifications of new jobs as they become available. Also, I recommend that you share this link with friends, um, your family, um, people in your network, people in your circles, so that they too can also be aware that the TTC hires for a number of different jobs. I think Rick mentioned a few. I think he mentioned IT. I believe he mentioned finance. We have jobs in procurement. Um, I'm in the HR slash talent management area of the business. Diversity, culture, a huge safety department as well. And as you all know, various engineering and construction departments and infrastructure departments. When you apply to a job at the TTC, you will be asked on the application, where did you hear about this job? And one of our outreach partners may have referred you, or maybe it was your school counselor, or somebody in your school, or alumni representative. I encourage you to include this referral on the application or in your cover letter. For everyone in attendance today, if you can't think of who it was that referred you, the default response to that question on the application is TTC event. If you're currently a student, you, uh, your career counselors can provide you with support to help you become job ready. If you're no longer a student, community employment agencies provide free support and that can help you get hired. It is like having a personal trainer that will help to guide you on your career path. And all of that would be for free. Thank you. Thank you, Marika. So now it is time to hear from you. As mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, please submit your questions via the chat feature. As, you will as, you, as we have many people participating, we apologize in advance if your question cannot be addressed during the webinar today. We do our best to select both common as well as unique questions that hopefully will answer your questions and concerns about the information you receive today. You can send additional questions to our email address at jobs at ttc.ca. I'd like to remind everyone that the session today is being recorded. So if you are unable to stay on for the remainder of the session, all, all attendees will be provided with the link to watch the recording again. We thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. So now I am going to read the questions as they come in and then I will turn it over to one of our panelists and uh, we'll go from there. So first question, I was wondering what requirements or qualifications I would need in order to get hired by the TTC uh, in a position. Uh, so Fort, I will turn this one over to you. Okay, great. It looks like everything's working. That's great. Okay, good. All right, so thanks for the question. So requirements and qualifications will vary for each position. The requirements will include things as work experience, skills, education, and a professional license, accreditation, and certification. Great. So next question we have is, um, are there other opportunities besides these positions that have been listed? I don't meet the skills or education qualifications for the roles discussed, but I would like to work with the TTC. So what should I do? Uh, Marika, can you help with this one? Yes, I can. Um, we thank you for your interest in joining the TTC. I recommend that you visit the career site, create your candidate profile, and apply directly for any jobs you feel that you meet the qualifications for. If a job you're interested in is not posted at this time, you can always set up those job email alerts tailored to your specific career goals. We offer a wide range of new positions on a regular basis, sometimes daily. So registering will enable you to not miss anything. Great, thank you, Marika. Um, so next question, um, I'm not a student or a new graduate. I attended this event to learn more about the various positions I'm interested in. 
Um, can I still apply? Adam, as our newest graduate, over to you. For sure. Uh, this is an information session, but not a hiring campaign. Once a position is posted for, applica for applications, everyone is more than welcome to apply. Great. So here's one. What happens if I need help with my interview skills? Um, Vaso, can I turn that over to you? Great. Thanks, Chapnam. You can most definitely connect with your local outreach partner or employment for that or employment agency for assistance in preparing for an interview. You can go to www.featured.finehealth.ca to locate the closest employment Ontario service provider and community agency in your area who can assist you with your employment and training related needs. Great. Here's a here's here's one. Do you only hire people who live in Toronto? Um, Marika. Um, no, the TTC is committed to fostering a positive workplace culture with a workforce that is representative of the communities it serves. And remember, the system now runs outside of Toronto into Vaughan, um, and it will be going beyond that. Um, ultimately, the TTC is committed to the principles of diversity and inclusion. So that's encouraging participation from all job seekers. All of our divisions are located in the city of Toronto, though, so that you need to be mindful of. Um, as long as you're able to meet the minimum, minimum qualifications, you're eligible to apply for that position, regardless of what your address is. Perfect. So here's actually a question that's super topical. Um, so what safety measures are in place during COVID-19 for TTC passengers as well as TTC employees? Uh, Fort, I'm going to turn this one over to you. Okay, thanks for the question. Yeah, safety is paramount to everything that we do. Uh, the safety of our employees and our customers is what guides our, our decision making. Uh, to protect customers, we've introduced multiple daily vehicle cleanings. We are deploying additional service to our busiest routes to, to ensure we kind of control crowding. We have hand sanitizer available in the stations and on the streetcars. Uh, we give away masks. We continue to give away masks actually in the stations and on the bus network. We have also taken a, a lot of different steps to protect our employees. Uh, they're provided with additional support through the distribution of personal protective equipment like wipes, gloves, masks, sanitizer, eye protection, uh, air or protective shields as well. Uh, our dedicated safety and environment department is really laser focused on employee health and safety throughout all of our workplaces. So the TTC has mandated, as you guys all know, the, the use of mask and face covering on all its vehicles and property for those who are able to wear one. And this applies to both customers and employees alike. Thank you for it. Um, so this one's actually very relevant to the session today. Why is the TTC suddenly focusing on hiring students and new graduates? Marika, can you take this question? Sure, no problem. Um, the TTC is committed to diversity. Remember, that's, that's my key focus here, bringing in diverse talent, a lot of different skills. And that includes people from all demographics, including gender, race, education, and age groups. We have a number of positions coming up that are the perfect fit for new grads. And we wanna make sure you're the first to know about these opportunities. Great, thank you, Marika. So the next question is, what are the shifts like? Uh, Adam, can you answer that? Yep. Uh, TDC is a 24-7 business. Shifts include mornings, afternoons, days, nights, splits, weekends, and holidays. Thank you, Adam. Um, you does the TTC provide daycare? Vaso, can you answer that? Yes, absolutely. No, the TTC does not provide daycare. So the next question, um, I am interested in these positions, but I am currently a student and would prefer a student position until I graduate. If or when will the student summer, sorry, the summer student program begin accepting applications for the summer term session? Uh, so that's a great question. Marika, do you have an answer for that one? Absolutely. Um, as previously mentioned, the career site, that's where you should visit. It should be your go-to 
create a candidate profile and apply directly if, to any job that you feel you meet the qualifications for. Since the summer student position isn't currently posted, you can set up your job email alerts tailored to your specific career goals. And once the summer student position is posted, you should be able to receive a job email alert. We typically post it at the end of the year or the beginning of the year. Now, because of COVID this year, it was posted very late. Um, normally it's posted December to January. This year we posted it in early March, early to mid-March. So you just missed it, unfortunately. Thank you, Marika. Uh, so here's one. What is involved in the medical? What if I have a disability? Will you still hire me? Uh, Fort, can I turn this one over to you? Sure, Shabnam. Yeah, the TTC conducts a pre-placement medical assessment uh, that basically aims to determine if the candidate's abilities meet the physical demands of the role they're applying for. The physical assessment and testing is carried out by suitably qualified health professionals at a third-party clinic. The assessment includes determination of any work restrictions if required. So I think we touched on this before, but I think it's probably worth kind of doing this again. Um, does the TTC provide personal protective equipment for its employees? Andrea, can I, can I have you answer this one? Absolutely. Uh, yes, the TTC provides numerous personal protective equipment like wipes, gloves, masks, sanitizer, eye protection, and protective shields. Our dedicated safety and environment department is laser focused on employment, health, and safety throughout all workplaces. Most PPE items can be obtained at your assigned division. You are also provided with a safety shoe voucher at the start of your employment to purchase safety shoes. Thank you. Um, so this question is an interesting one. I have some parking tickets. Does that go against me? Can I still apply to the TTC? Just want to remind everyone the chat is anonymous, so no one will know who wrote that. Um, and I will turn it over to Vaso. Thanks, Chapnam. So parking infractions typically do not go on your driver's abstract but they can lead to license suspension, some suspe suspensions, pardon me, if left unpaid. It is recommended to pay your outstanding tickets in order to maintain an active and valid driver's license during the recruitment process. Thank you, Vaso. Uh, so how long is the probation period at the TTC? Vaso, I think this might be another one for you. Sure, no problem. So the probation period at the TTC is approximately 10 months from the date of hire. And this also has been agreed upon with the union. It is outlined also in the collective agreement. Perfect. And just another sort of question in that vein, um, what is compensation like for positions at the TTC? Vaso, I think this is also sort of your area. Sure, no problem. Um, so salary wages vary based on the requirements of the role and salary information will be dis will be disclosed on job postings when the positions will become available. So here's one. What happens if I'm not a Canadian citizen? What if I'm a refugee? Um, I guess this would also sort of be like what happens if I have a work permit or uh, waiting for a permanent resident status? Uh, can you still, can you, would you still hire me at the TTC? So Marika, can I turn this one over to you? Sure. Um, a valid work permit or permanent resident status is required to work in Canada. So please review your documents to ensure that employment with the TTC is within your outlined conditions. Here's, a, here's an interesting one. So what is the TTC's maternity leave program like? Is it just sort of the government standard or is there anything that would exceed that? Um, Faso, can I get you to answer this one? Absolutely. So employees will be eligible to take a pregnancy leave in accordance with the Employment Standards Act, uh, which is up to 17 continuous weeks. TTC provides a pregnancy leave top-up benefit um, you will also need to qualify for EI maternity benefits under the EI Act in order to receive the top-up benefit. 
If qualified, you can receive top up to a maximum of 15 weeks. TTC will pay a top up equal to the difference between the EI maternity benefit plus any other earnings and 85% of the employee's regular job-based rate. After, after the 17 weeks, you will go on, excuse me, you will go on unpaid parental leave from the TTC. However, you are paid through EI if qualified. Great, so the next question is, um, I have a college uh, diploma from outside um, the country. I think this might also apply for university degrees. Can I still apply to the TTC? Would, would my sort of qualification count? Uh, Andrea, can you answer this one? Oh, Andrea, I'm not sure your volume's on. My apologies. No worries. TTC <laughs> technical, more technical difficulties. Um, okay, so yes, TTC would accept an original Canadian community college diploma, a minimum of two years on a full-time program, or a university degree from an accredited college or university. Uh, please refer to a website. There is a link where you can see if your college or university is accredited. Thank you. So what happens if I don't have a resume? Basso, what, what then? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think I had answered this uh, in a previous question, um, but definitely you can connect with your local outreach partner or employment agency for assistance in preparing a resume. Um, you can go to www.feature.findhelp.ca to locate the closest Employment Ontario service provider and community agency in your area who can assist you with your employment and training related needs. Thank you. So here's another one. What else if I don't have a G license? Uh, Vaso, again, I think this is sort of your area. What do you, what do you, what do you think? Sure. There are various roles at the TTC um, that do require a minimum of an Ontario G license. Uh, positions that require an Ontario Class G license must have license must have a license in good standing during the time of application and during the recruitment process. The Ministry of Transportation for Ontario (MTO) website outlines the steps required to obtain your G1, G2, and full G Class license. We have the option to select your closest drive test center and book an appointment online. Thank you, Beth. So I think actually this next question is for you as well. Um, what ends if my education is outside of Canada? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so any education completed outside of Canada needs to be evaluated. Uh, we do ask that you have your education evaluated for the Canadian equivalency. The companies to support you in achieving this are um, one, uh, World Education Services, uh, two, International Credential Assessment Service of Canada, which is ICAS, or Comparative Education Services, which is CES. Um, more info regarding education can be found on our website. Thank you. So uh, switching gears a bit, so what happens if I need an accommodation? Marika, can you answer that question? Absolutely. Um, the TTC, again, is committed to fostering a positive workplace culture um, with a workforce that is truly representative of the communities it services. The TTC is committed to principles of diversity and inclusion, and with that, we encourage participation from all job seekers. Accommodation is available for participants, including those with disabilities, by email, jobs at ttc.ca if you require accommodation, or there's a number that can be called at 416-393-4570. Um, and all, that information is posted at, at the bottom of every job opportunity that we post, whether it's in the schools or on our TTC website. So that information, if you didn't catch it, it will be on the bottom of a job posting. Great, thank you, Marika. 
So this next question is also pretty topical. Um, so how does the TTC support uh, mental health for its employees? Uh, Bort, can I uh, can I turn that one over to you? Yes, of course. Uh, so the TTC does have a number of uh, resources and programs to support mental health for our employees. Um, we have the Employee Family Assistance Program, also known as EFAP, which is a confidential, voluntary, short-term support over the telephone, in person, uh, online, and through a variety of uh, self-guided resources. We have our benefit plan, which provides coverage for psychological services like therapy, counseling, et cetera. We also have the Beacon program, which is an, inter an internet-based uh, cognitive behavioral ther therapy or CBT program. We have the LifeSpeak expert blog that gives uh, employees uh, instant access to expert advice on topics that matter to, the, to our employees. So, and there are also numerous health and well-being campaigns and seminars that, that, that are made available to employees. Great, thank you. All right. So what happens if my driver's license is from Alberta? Can I still apply? So I guess more generally, uh, what happens if my license is from outside of Ontario? Um, Andrea, can I can I get you to answer this one? For sure. Uh, yes, the MTO will be able to convert the license to the Ontario equivalency. Uh, you may require a driver's abstract from your current province in order to do so, and you're eligible to apply without, with an out-of-province license, but we will require you to convert your license in Ontario. Perfect. Uh, here's another uh, license question for it. I think this is more in your area. Do I need a special license in order to apply for some of these positions or for any of these positions, really? Yeah, sure. Um, it's quite simply different positions will require an Ontario Class G license or a certification under designation. So it depends oh. on the position. <laughs> So, all right, I'm not sure if the technical difficulty was with me or with Fort. Um, I'm just gonna keep pressing forward. Um, so when do you expect the job to be posted? I've applied in the past, can I reapply? Basso, can I, can I get you to answer that one? Yes, of course. So you are eligible to reapply. Um, all event attendees will be notified by email when the position becomes available. Uh, the best way to stay informed is to create a candidate profile on our career on our career site. On your candidate profile, you can set up job email alerts tailored to your specific career goal goals, including the outline positions once it becomes available. Okay. Um, another very topical question with COVID-19. Will the TTC be enforcing employees to take the COVID-19 vaccine when it is available? Marika, can I, can I give you that one? Of course. Um, the TTC has followed the guidance of Toronto Public Health throughout the pandemic and will continue to take their advice going forward. All right. So here's a kind of a fun one. How does vacation work at the TTC? When do I get vacation? How do I book it off? Uh, Vaso, can I give you that one? Sure, absolutely. Vacation entitlement is in accordance with the salary level of the position. Uh, therefore, the vacation allotment increases with the more years of service you have. It will be outlined, further outlined in accordance with the staff vacation policy. Perfect. So what are the application steps? FASO, can I, can I give you that one? Yes, absolutely. The application steps are outlined in detail on our website. Uh, so basically in short, you are attending this information session. We encourage you to create a TTC job profile and set up job alerts. Once the position is posted, you will get an email to apply. Please then apply for the position. If proceeding with your application, you will be invited to an interview. Once everything has been completed successfully, you will be presented with a conditional offer of employment. Once you accept our offer, you may be asked to complete a pre-placement medical or drug test dependent on safety requirements of the role. 
and a criminal background check. Once all of the conditions of the employment are met, you will be documented and a start and a start and training date will be confirmed. Okay, so here's kind of the next question I think with that one is, so how do I apply? Uh, so I think that's all that yeah. just makes sense over and over again. Okay, so ways of applying. Uh, we encourage everyone to create a TTC job profile and set up job alerts tailored to your specific career goals. When positions are posted on our website, you will receive an automatic email alert to apply. Perfect. So this one came fast and furious. Will I be drug tested? What is involved in the drug test? Fort, over to you. Certainly, hi. Uh, so drug testing is only required if you've been hired into what we call a safety designated position and will be required to complete a drug test as part of the certification process. So further information on these details will be provided at that time. Okay. So are these positions unionized? Uh, what does a union do? How much does it cost? Um, Adam, can you answer this question? Yeah, for sure. Uh, the positions we have posted are not unionized. Okay. Um, so does the TTC complete reference checks? How many references will be required? Uh, Vaso, another one for you, I think. Sure. Uh, yes, absolutely. We will be asking for employment references during the recruitment process. Uh, we do not accept personal references. We will ask for employment reference references from direct managers or supervisors for jobs you have held over the past five years. It is uh, good to prepare this information in advance since many employees move on to other positions or jobs. If you are unable to provide employment references, your recruiter will work with you for an alternative. Perfect. So I wear religious attire. Do you think that will be a problem in getting hired? Uh, Marika, can I give you that question? Sure. Um, the TTC is committed to fostering, again, a positive workplace culture within a workforce that is truly representative of the communities it serves. So this includes allowing employees to wear religious attire. Perfect. So here's a good one. What are the job benefits? Andrea, over to you. Thank you. Um, TTC offers really amazing benefits. Uh, they have ex extensive healthcare plan, a dental plan, a group life insurance. TTC also provides tuition aid, an employee pass that will allow you free transportation in the TTC system, and a, de and, sorry, and a defined benefit pension plan. So do you process um, a criminal record search? What happens if I have a criminal record? Vaso, can you answer that question? Sure. Candidates being hired will be required to complete a criminal background search. After successfully completing the interview, candidates are provided with a conditional offer letter. One of the mandatory conditions is the crim criminal background check. Further information on the details and evaluation of your results are provided at that time. If you do have a record, it is suggested that you look into having a pardon. However, each situation is looked on a case-by-case -case basis. <clears throat> Thank you. So Marika, I feel like this next question is also for you. Um, I'm involved in a religious service once a week for a couple of hours. How would I go about getting that time off approved? Sure, thanks. Um, if you're a successful candidate, you'll be assigned to an employment services assistant in the talent management department for the duration of the pre-employment process. Um, you would need to inform this in individual, this ESA for short, of the situation to ensure they connect you with the appropriate contact in the human rights department. Great. So here's another one. What, what is the pension? Can you tell me about it? Um, Vaso, can I give you that one? Sure. It's a good Good question. Um, the TTC offers a mandatory pension for full-time regular employees of six months of service. 
Uh, so you make you do make contributions based on your salary. TTC matches the contribution. These contributions are automatically deducted from your weekly pre-authorized pay. When you are eligible for retirement, there is a defined benefit formula based on your contributions that will be paid out on a monthly basis. Great, thank you. Uh, Fort, I'm going to give you this question. What is the stance, um, sorry, what is the TTC stance on recreational use of marijuana? The TTC requires all employees to report and remain fit to uh, work or fit for duty. So what this means is having the ability to safely and acceptably perform their uh, assigned duties without limitations from extreme fatigue and or the use or after effects of drugs. Uh, it includes being free from the risk of effects of illicit drugs, alcohol, medication, and or mood or mind altering substances like cannabis, uh, as well as the use or misuse of and or failure to take prescribed medication. Great. Thank you for it. Um, so I think that seems to be all our questions for now. Um, please remember that you can email them in if you have uh, any other questions that come up. And I think for now, I would just like to take uh, the mo this moment to actually thank all the panelists for answering all of those questions that came in. Of course, uh, due to time constraints, we couldn't get in all the questions, um, but there are those mechanisms that we mentioned on how to reach us if you have anything that comes up. So um, for now, um, I hope you kind of got all the information you needed and all the insight into the, DC, into the TTC to see us as an employer of choice. And with that, I'm actually gonna turn it back over to Marika to offer the closing remarks for this session. Thanks, Shabnam. Before we wrap up, I want to remind you to follow us on Instagram. We have a fun filter that can be accessed from your mobile device at Take the TTC. You can then post a video or a picture using a very cool filter with the hashtag, hashtag TTC Connects. Thank you all for attending this event. I hope you got information that answered your questions, and I hope that we inspired you to consider a career at the TTC in a job that can be very rewarding and extremely fulfilling. Thanks again for your time, and I'm sending you well wishes to both you and your loved ones to stay safe and healthy during these very challenging times. On behalf of the TTC and our outreach partners, I would like to thank you for attending our TTC Connects Engineering, Construction and Technical Virtual Information Session for new and recent graduates.